that was proven false. Uh, said you couldn't go faster than the speed of sound because uh, you would shake apart, shake yourself to death. That was proven wrong. Einstein, if I'm unless I'm mistaken, said that nothing travels the, the, faster than the speed of light, and the speed of light is constant. Well, I think once again that that is eventually going to be proved wrong, um, and I think the light um, is the key um, is, as far as figuring all this stuff out. Um, uh, one, one thing that occurs to me, and I was hoping you could give your comment on this, is that if the speed of light was constant and fixed, how do you account for the fact that not even light can escape from a black hole? If light can't escape from a black hole, doesn't that mean that light is traveling at zero miles an hour or less? Well, uh, it means basically that the black hole cannot radiate energy. What, what would, is occurring is is because of its intense gravitational pull within its own diameter, uh, which is called the Schwarzschild uh, diameter, that the light is uh, redshifted. Uh, we know about gravitational redshifts. Uh, it's the same as a recessional redshift, and uh, it stretches out the frequencies of the of the uh, electromagnetic radiation. And uh, if it's attempting to come out of a black hole, it's redshifted to infinity, which means that it has zero energy and therefore it can't escape. It is, is that different than actually traveling at a slower speed? Um, if, 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 you're, if you're shifting the red and the, the wavelength is longer, can't the wavelength eventually get long enough that it isn't a wave anymore? Well, that's what happens. Is actually it, it's, it's redshifted to infinity, and therefore it doesn't uh, have any energy and it can't escape. Okay, so Philip. Any, any of the energy within the black hole has to remain within it. Let's go to Philip in Montreal. You're on the air. Hi, Philip. Hi, Doctor. Doctor, I'm concerned that this situation uh, is very reminiscent of uh, the Challenger launch decision where you have many scientists, you know, expressing concerns. I'm especially concerned that concerning the formation of a mini black hole or a black hole of any size, um, that their excuse is that it will evaporate according to Hawking evaporation. And the idea there is that Near an event horizon, a particle and antiparticle pairs are formed by a process called Hawking radiation, and the antiparticle component goes in and annihilates some of the matter in the black hole, and that annihilation is the mechanism for the evaporation of the black hole. The problem is pair annihilation only produces photons, which are just light, and I don't see how that escapes. I don't see how the singular, the singularity core can possibly evaporate. Any annihilation going on must be, and any evaporation going on must be occurring outside the event horizon. Therefore, the singularity core itself is irreducible. Is there no discussion that Hawking's idea of evaporation is just a, a thought experiment? Well, and that's what we're trying to promote, uh, uh, a discussion about that. Uh, I've uh, had some conversations with some of the professors in physics at UCLA, explaining to them how it's just an idea and it can't be proven correct. I've had discussions. I've been blogging with other physicists, and uh, it sort of uh, was an idea that got accepted as being, well, this is probably the way it is, to the idea that it was accepted, this is, has to be the way it is, and they were using it as a justification for safety. And it really, uh, uh, exactly as you said, it's not something that, that sounds very plausible. Uh, you didn't have it quite right. It's either uh, when it, you have particle pair production, uh, it's particles and antiparticles uh, being produced. Uh, it's not necessarily the antiparticle that has to go in. It could be the particle that goes in and the antiparticle that, that goes out. Uh, Hawking radiation would be a mixture of, if it were real, it would be a mixture of particles and antiparticles, equal equal amounts of, of either uh, coming out. But uh, it... it doesn't really make much sense. Uh, it's also uh, Occam's razor would uh, have you eliminate it because there's no need to postulate its existence unless you have some kind of experimental evidence. And it, it contradicts basically uh, some of our cherished concepts in physics. And so we've, we've uh, been stressing that it's really just an idea that's not in any way, shape, or form proven. And it's, uh, at best, it's a 50-50 chance of it working. Uh, you can read more about that on our website at lhcdefense.org. 
Uh, and uh, you could send me an email. I'd be, it sounds to me like you've read up on this some. Uh, I'd be happy to give you some more information, give you some of the information we've developed on this. Is there any possibility that even before this thing truly goes online that it could explode or something could happen to it? Well, yes. <laughs> uh, that's a big worry for CERN. Uh, and when they inject these beams of protons, uh, they're traveling uh, at very high speed with a lot of energy. Uh, at, at full uh, energy, uh, the beam of proton has the energy of a high-speed train. Uh, I mean, a tremendous amount of energy. And if, and if they uh, mess up with the guiding of the magnet as it goes around in this big 27-kilometer circle, and if it, and if they don't aim it just right as it goes through there, if one of the magnets fails or something, it could just uh, burn a hole in the side of the uh, apparatus, cause, uh, which would immediately cause a large number of the magnets to uh, fail. The magnets themselves uh, have a tremendous amount of stored energy in them, and uh, they would explode, and, and uh, you, you could have a, a major cleanup problem, if you will, uh, while, uh, if, if there was some kind of uh, problem in, in the uh, acceleration of the proton. So that's something they, that concerns CERN, of course, and that's one of the reasons why when it's on operation, they have no people inside of the ring because of not just the synchrotron radiation, but because of the fact that you, you could have a major disaster. That happened once at uh, Fermilab. They burned a hole in the side of the wall, you know, uh, yeah. of their of the ring and uh, major problems. It was, out, it was down for several months and uh, so forth. Sometimes I think, Walter, science goes a little too far. This might be the case. Well, I, I agree. I think this is uh, something that we, we're we beyond uh, what we know about, and it, certainly it would be nice to know the answers, but uh, it's not worth the risk to find out those answers. There's so many other things that we don't know the answers to out there still, that we're working on. We have a satellite going up uh, this month, I believe, or, or it might be put off a little bit, called the GLAST, G-L-A-S-T. It's going to be searching for Hawking radiation. Uh, we should at least wait till we get the results back from that and see if there is such a thing as Hawking radiation. Uh, I don't believe there is. Uh, and there are going to be other satellites going up. We're here on the big island where I live. Uh, we're looking at uh, commissioning a new uh, telescope. It's called the 30-meter telescope, a uh, huge telescope that will be... See, I can handle that kind of technology. Yeah, and, and this is something that's completely passive. You just uh, look up in the heavens and, and observe, and then you uh, think about what you see, come up with your ideas and conclusions, have, have more information, uh, all of which is very safe to do. Uh, this is something that uh, is, is potentially disastrous, and we really need to... Uh, stop this uh, at this stage anyway until we have more information on what's going on. All right. Thank you very much, Walter. And we'll uh, keep doing updates with you as we get uh, close to when they truly go online.